Terry Allen, Inventing Guitar Mathematics, and today I'm presenting a lecture on Beatles Secret Guitar Music Intelligence in, in drop D tuning, double drop D tuning, and drop G tuning. Now these are sort of accessory tunings that the Beatles use in an exploratory way and each tuning has only you know five or ten examples at most so this group counts for probably less than ten percent of the Beatles repertoire. Now the thing that's interesting about the guitar mathematically is that it's a closed model and what that means is there's nothing that can happen on the guitar that will lead to a result that is outside of the guitar. So everything that you know about the guitar is determined from the tuning. And the, uh, the interesting part is that uh, you, you learn the guitar from the tuning intervals and nothing else. So we look at the guitar as kind of a, a closed model which Leibniz calls, called an integral domain and which you can think of as an atomic structure. The guitar is an atom and in this case its valence is drop D which is 75545. And the um, atom has different states of energy and different transitions between states that are reflected by the sound that is radiated by the atom. So the atom has a characteristic pattern of radiation that can be used to deduce the atomic formula. Now, when you're thinking of drop D tuning, you think of it's like standard. Standard is 55545, five, drop D is 75545. Five. So you think of it as being standard tuning where you add two frets to any note that falls on the first string. And that's a good memory aid, but it's not sufficient for understanding how drop D tuning works. Because, for example, if you simply added two notes to every, uh, two frets to every note on the bass string, you would have music in which the lowest note was here two, two frets above the capo or above the nut and there wouldn't be any notes that fall on the open string or the first string and that would be a sign of a kind of a, of a limited arrangement because almost any good guitar music arrangement is going to take advantage of the note that's on the open string, the open bass string. So that's why you like the key of E in standard because the bass string is tuned to E and so it's easy to harmonize that open bass string with E chords up and down the neck. So when I look at the uh, Beatles complete score sheet music for here comes the sun, I can see immediately that it's not correctly written. Because the piece is a finger style guitar and it has to have an alternating bass. And so when I look at the, uh, the Beatles complete score tablature, the first thing I see is there's no alternating bass. It's either a monotonic bass on the, the uh, D string or for the G, it's just playing a, a bass that doesn't move. It just uh, falls repeatedly on the bass string G note. And so that I recognize is a problem which occurs when you transcribe drop D tuning into standard because drop D has this alternation on the, the bass string and the the four string and uh, when you change that to standard tuning it all collapses down onto the D string and uh, so one of the interesting things about Here Comes the Sun is I've seen a lot of guitarists play it some play it in standard some play it in drop D but everyone plays it in the guitar key of D 
So the fact that the observed key on the record is A is just dismissed. No one, no one even uh, considers playing it in the key of A because they recognize that D uh, configuration, the D chord. And so it's, they simply adjust the intonation of the guitar to match the record. And that shows the supremacy of the guitar key over the pitch in the record. Because if you use the pitch in the record, you'll think the key is A, and you'll be misled. So, um, I think it's interesting that they fail to recognize in the Beatles' complete score that the, the song is played in drop D tuning, because it shows that they have relatively uh, poorly developed guitar music intelligent quotes. In the entire Beatles complete score, it's almost 200 songs, there's only three or four that are in, in a non-standard tuning. And it's clear that they arrived at those uh, drop D configurations simply because they heard a D note on the bass string and they realized that at least that string was not tuned to the standard tuning and intonation. played at the seventh fret, but I just find that uh, position for the capo to be uh, too high for me to articulate it. It's in an interesting um, category with Norwegian wood, which also seems to have a capo at the seventh fret. And there's a photograph of John Lennon playing guitar with a capo at the fifth fret. So it may be that the um, intonation of the guitar is two semitones higher and then the fret position can be uh, relaxed a little bit or or maybe he really does play it that high. It's kind of clear that um, the chords are a little bit of a stretch and they sound kind of clunky if you play them uh, in the open position without the capo. So that blocky arrangement of the uh, chords in the Beatles complete score tablature for that song is clearly not correct and if you look at it the um, the the tablature doesn't have an alternating bass and a lot of times they're just playing the melody notes as if they don't understand where the bass notes are supposed to fall now the um, bass notes on guitar are subject to a kind of closure because you want them to stay on the bottom three strings and so whenever a note moves either above that 
uh, register or it moves off the bottom string, you return it to that same register by an octave inversion. So the, the bass notes in a uh, finger style are ordered in two different ways. They're, they're pleasing in two separate categories. The first is that they are harmonically pleasing according to certain rules where you, you want the bass to alternate, say, between the tonic and its octave, or the tonic and its fifth, or you may see an alternation where it's tonic, fifth, third, fifth, and so on. But then they're also separately ordered according to which strings on the guitar those notes fall. So you like an alternation between the 6 and the 4 string, or between the 6, 4, 5, 4, and so that's uh, pleasing in a different way. And so what happens is you have uh, a pattern which is pleasing both harmonically and also pleasing to the guitar. Now, Continuing with George Harrison and Drop D, um, they, the use of, the, of um, keys in, in Drop D seems a little bit limited by the Beatles because the strong keys are obviously tilted very much towards the key of D from relative to standard. But also you have good keys in the key of G and A and possibly C. But uh, only G, I think, is, is used by the Beatles, and here's an example. Have you seen the little piggies crawling in the dirt? And for all the little piggies, life is getting worse. piggies in their starch white shirt. You will find the bigger piggies stirring up the dirt. Always have clean shirts to play around in. In this dive with all their backing So I'm using the capo to match the a key of the record, and I'm trying to capture the uh, song as a guitar composition, because in the record you can hardly hear the guitar, it's some strumming of occasional chords, but um, those runs in between are played by a, another instrument, and so what I'm trying to show is that the entire song can be captured in this tuning in a particularly unique way that the Beatles' complete scores overlooked. And the chords are so generic, G, D, E minor, and so forth, you can play them in standard tuning, but I think that if you play them in drop D, you'll see it's a better arrangement. And it's interesting that the uh, Beatles recycle these uh, keys and, and uh, chord progressions, but they never seem to use the same uh, chord progression and the same key and tuning in any two songs. And they, uh, they look like they uh, use changes in intonation of the guitar with the capo or by detuning it to sort of uh, make an, an old key tuning combination a little bit different.
Again, that's a, a song where you, you can't really transcribe the tablature from the record because the, the guitar is in such a uh, non-forward -for position that you can hardly hear it. There's a lot of other instruments, uh, but I still think that it was composed on the guitar. Now, writing tablature and playing guitar are almost the same thing, but you use different parts of your brain to look at the numbers on the paper than you do when you listen to the sound of the music. So they're complementary writing tablature and, and uh, guitar, and even though the Beatles didn't write tablature, in, in effect when you're playing guitar, you're writing tablature as if the guitar was sort of a typewriter and you're ta typing out the, uh, the tablature when you, uh, you know, fret the, fret the strings. Then the earliest work of the Beatles, you don't find examples of drop D tuning and they seem to appear somewhere in the music copyright order around 1965. And, uh, so it appears that they, it was not one of the original tunings that they mastered, but they uh, came to explore it sometime around the mid-60s with songs like this. Sixty-five are kind of in the uh, chordal drop D style. That's for uh, ballads. It kind of resembles uh, Dylan's uh, "I'm All Right, Ma, I'm Only Bleeding," where there's a video that shows him playing that in drop D. And uh, so that's kind of in contrast to the other drop D pieces, which have a more finger style arrangement. And this this may be the earliest. Uh, uh, the earliest 
drop D song in simple uh, drop D chords and uh, you know we all like the A minor D chords and in this tuning you get a little lift because the A minor is, is still the same it's in it's impaired by this string which would be either the fifth or and so it's kind of a not harmonic on all six strings. So the A minor still has the five strings that you want, but the D has become a six string chord. So it's, it's a more powerful A minor D progression. string from E to D. And I'm going to play uh, this song by McCartney in the uh, post beetle phase. song in the um, drop D or double drop D tuning. I can't really tell because there aren't any notes on the top string that differentiate them, but I think it's a little bit better in the double drop D because you get that complete chord. The a double drop D effect is to turn the A chord into a bar across the top four strings. And uh, so I think it's a little bit fuller and I really like the way that he's using these these chords. This this B flat as a bonus of the of drop D because you, you can't really play this chord in standard tuning, but in this tuning you get the third, the D in the bass. So that makes it a B flat and open 
chord position. And then it's using the um, this bar, this it's a power chord on the three bass strings, and it's used kind of like the um, T bar in the G family tuning. You can you can slide it around and, and move it very quickly, and it it's a perfectly good B flat. Tuning, you have this series of chords which have the tonic on the bass string and then you have this chord which looks like a, a bar chord made from an A in standard which has its tonic on the, the second bass string and those are the kind of two chords that uh, make a match system of chords up and down the neck that allow you to play in almost any key or play any chord you want, it, at least as a power chord. Now double drop D is a, is a, a very powerful tuning and unlike dad gad and drop D which are really tilted towards the key of D, the uh, double drop D has a uh, spectrum of useful keys that includes probably six different good keys so it's really uh, an amazing key and uh, an introduction to it might be uh, Stevie Nicks' Landslide. There's a story that um, John Lennon learned double drop D from Donovan, but the the earliest example of double drop D in the um, Beatles catalog is this song. When I call you up, So that's a harmonization of the a major chord over the, uh, the open bass strings and it's really nice how it starts off with the A and then this is the B7. There's a very Beatleoid chords, they, uh, they have that kind of ching ching sound. Beatles complete scores 
tumble to the fact that the bottom string is in D and so they transcribed it and dropped D, but they missed the fact that the top string is also dropped to D. And I've looked at a number of the Hal Leonard uh, sheet music copies for Dear Prudence and none of, the, uh, none of them quite make sense because they may have the right notes but they don't have the right position on the guitar. So I think it, that uh, that song is clearly written in double drop D and it uh, really gives it that kind of light, airy quality. But it also shows that there's, it's just sort of a walking a chord down over the uh, open bass strings and it's a relatively simple use of the tuning. at the end there where it goes her hair of floating sky is shimmering glimmering and then the walk down this is F sharp minor 7 F sharp minor 6 F sharp minor plus 5 and then back to the uh, F sharp minor seven. It's kind of a weird progression, but it's sort of like the other uh, descending minor chord progressions that they use in open D and open D minor. And it's the one where the the walk down doesn't go all the way. It goes uh, seven, six, five, and then back to the bar instead of walking down further, one further fret. And finally, this is a drop G tuning. So that's like a drop D, but I've also dropped the A string down to G. It's sometimes called G6 tuning, and it's a, a direct relative of open G because it's different only on the top string. And it's also closely related to standard because it has all four uh, treble strings are the same as standard and only the two bass strings are different. And this may seem like an obscure tuning to you, but I don't think it is. It has a, a large body of literature uh, that's uh, songs or uh, rags, piano rags, and other uh, music that's, that's written in this tuning and it's uh, well known among uh, a guitarist and uh, I think it has a role in rock and roll that's unrecognized but it certainly has a role in blues and one of the thesis that I've been working on is that Blind Blake used uh, this drop G tuning uh, for a number of songs and Blake was certainly the master of open D and like in police dog blues. He also played in open D minor and I think he played in drop D. So I, I suspect that he, he also knew the uh, drop D tuning, drop G tuning. And I think uh, Tampa Red gets his sound uh, from that, uh, that same tuning.
things that you like about drop G tuning is the way that the um, that G turnaround is preserved because in open G, this G note here moves up to here, and it makes that turnaround too hard to play. It's too much of a stretch. So here you have that G, G7, C, E flat 7 progression that you want to have for the Gary Davis, Blind Blake uh, style of playing. And that doesn't seem to be a style that the uh, Beatles were familiar with, but I'm uh, pointing out that it is an important American guitar tuning. The theory of drop G tuning for the Beatles is kind of weak because there, there aren't really good examples where you can tell that they're not playing in open G. And you sort of a sense that open G is uh, so much more important that it's, it's kind of hard to define the role of drop G tuning, but I have a couple of uh, songs I want to uh, illustrate. It's got all the open G style playing with this T bar and the C bar, but it also has the uh, G, the D chord on the top strings that you like for the uh, sus chord. So that song could be played in uh, in open G, but I think that drop G is a little bit stronger. That song dates from 1965. Here's, here's a, a later version of this tuning. I'd rather see you dead little girl than to be with another man. You better keep your head little girl, you won't know where I am. You better run for your life if you can little girl. suggesting that a uh, baby a rich man might be in uh, drop G tuning. And then you have uh, um, some other songs that it's hard to tell if they're an open G or open or drop G like this one. Yeah. 
fits that song or not, but I, I kind of like it a little bit better in this tuning. Now, Act Naturally is the one I think that's probably the most certain in uh, drop G tuning because of this intro lick. <laughs> runs that you have in, in the G family where you can walk up to the G and then up to the four chord back down and again you like that that D chord on the top of the drop G or that all of the standard chords are on the top four strings so I want to close this lecture by talking about Jimi Hendrix, When Cries Mary, and show how I parsed this in the drop G tuning. Because it has this uh, figure where it's a E flat, E, F. And what he does is he, he sort of conjugates those chords up the neck. So you can tell that uh, where, where they're played according to the tuning. If you conjugate it through all the different tunings, what you find is that open G tuning seems to be the one with the best conjugation, or so I thought for a number of years. Now, in the first lecture series I gave in 2002, I showed that um, uh, Castles Made of Sand is played in, in drop G tuning. It has this introduction. And then this characteristic figure. That, that that opening set of chords, which are like a, this is a G9, then he slides. Are in drop G tuning, but it was kind of strange because um, it didn't seem that there were any other Hendrix songs in drop G tuning, and. Uh, I, I could believe that Hendrix coming from the Seattle area was influenced by John Fahey. And Fahey was an advocate of different tunings. And so I, I think in the Seattle area, guitars might have known about drop D tuning. So I was kind of trying to think of, well, why would Hendrix like the drop D tuning? And, I thought, well, you know, what it does is you have in, in open G, you have a very strong E pentatonic scale. Uh, I mean, after all, open G is 
going to be close to E minor as its relative minor. So um, then I start. Then I notice that little wing, which you know, presumably is in open E minor, uh, although you have to deal with Hendrix usually intonates his guitar at E flat instead of E. But you know everyone can see that that's a, just a, a bump. It, you just bump the guitar up to E, and uh, then then Hendrix's guitar makes sense. But maybe it should be bumped down to D. But at any rate, um, for Little Wing, you have this. like for the A minor, you have all the same licks that you would have in, in Little Wing and Standard Tune because you have these top four strings are the same. And then that walk down from the five chord can be at this position, B minor. The really interesting thing is this G9 chord. So I'm not sure if that matches the recording, but it certainly is a very Hendrix uh, style of playing that you tend to think he would have known about. And so then I thought, well, if Hendrix uses drop G tuning, what other songs would he uh, play? And, and it occurred to me that if you're looking at the Wind Cries Neri from the standpoint of drop D tuning, you really see the key as being G and not F. So instead of this figure where it's E flat, E, F, you have F. G. And the reason that makes more sense is because it's coming in on the tonic of the tuning. So the key of G is much stronger in this tuning than in the, the key of F. And so then I realized you have this conjugation of the chords that goes like this. tunings that I can find, that's the best way to play those, those chords. And particularly, I like the fact that the hammer-ons match the recording because in, you, you, you can almost always get the chords, but you can't necessarily get the hammer-on. tuning, but the key is F, then that means it's really drop F. It's the same tuning as drop G, but it's tuned two semitones down. So this is this guitar is tuned in, in drop F, and I want to show how that affects the tonality.
I think that's a much better way to play it than to play it in the key of F. And I really like the walk down from the D. With the hammer-ons on the G chord up here. to show in this series of lectures that the Beatles songs are relatively easy to play as guitar music goes and uh, the ethics of the beat music are that you can play the music easily up to tempo and in an expressive way and you're using original chords so if you play these songs in standard tuning you sound like everybody else, but you don't sound like the Beatles. And when I look at the Beatles complete scores, I can see that the guitar music intelligence quotient of the transcribers was low. Because the number of keys and the number of tunings that you use are a measure of your guitar music intelligence. Now obviously when you start out, you learn your first song in one key, and as you progress you learn more keys. Now there's never a time in which all of the keys are equally useful, but advanced guitarists will find uses for not only the standard keys that everyone plays, but also the oddball keys which have particular use for a certain mode or, or a certain kind of song. So when I look at the Beatles complete scores and I see that they transcribe every song in standard tuning except for four, and in those four they didn't even really uh, explore the possibility that it was anything more than drop D, that tells me that their transcriptionist is in an early stage of learning tunings and he knows standard tuning very well, drop D not so well, and the other tunings not at all. So if you know the Beatles songs in standard tuning, you think that they're all in standard tuning, you think the Beatles only use standard tuning, but you can't understand how to play some of the songs and it leaves you with the conclusion that the Beatles are like superhuman guitarists. So if you know standard and drop D, then you find that the song is kind of split into two categories, where one category is the standard tuning songs, and the other category is the drop D songs, and you can pretty, tell, pretty clearly tell which one is which. Uh, you know, mostly because of whether there's a D on the bass string, but there are other things that, um, that can identify the songs in one or the other group, standard or drop D. And so as you increase the number of tunings, so you have your third or fourth or fifth tuning and you go through all the songs, you find out that they sort into different tunings in a fairly characteristic way. So what I've done here is to try and set up a scientific paradigm for Beatles guitar. My work is reproducible. You can play these songs in the same tuning and key as I have and see if you agree that they're better than the Beatles' complete scores. And you can also try and find a better tuning or key for the songs. Now, uh, it's possible to measure the computational complexity of guitar and it's actually fairly low as computational problems go. So for example, if every note on guitar could be played in two positions, then the number of possibilities is astronomical because a, a, a musical score with a hundred notes in it might have two to the hundredth power possible places to play those notes, in which case you would just be lost trying to find the best possible arrangement because the number of arrangements you'd have to consider would be way too large. But actually it's, it's much smaller, it's much easier to find the best possible arrangement than you think if you do it systematically. And 
what the mathematics indicate is that you cannot keep finding better and better arrangements for a Beatles song. You, what happens is when you go to drop D, you, you recognize the notes are falling on the D string properly and you think, wow, this is really it, but you don't realize there's still another string or two to go before it finally clicks into that final arrangement. Uh, so, the tablature for guitar is a consistent mathematical system, which means you can always tell which tabs are true and which tabs are false. But that doesn't mean that you can't be misled and for a while you think, well, this is the correct tuning and later on you realize that there's a higher principle and there's actually a better tuning. But it's not possible to just keep on finding better and better arrangements. So what I say is, I probably haven't done enough experiments to nail all of the Beatles tuning and guitar keys down but I'm, I'm getting close and the, uh, if you can find a better arrangement there probably won't be a whole lot of better arrangements out there. So I think this is largely a corporate project where one person can't really completely define the uh, Beatles canon but under a large number of experiments we will figure out how they play these things because after all there is one and only one key in tuning for each of the guitar parts in the record. Bye.